The first stage of memory is encoding. Encoding is defined as the initial learning of information. Some subconcepts that include encoding are primacy effect, which is a tendency to remember well the first items, the recency effect, which is a tendency to remember well the final item, and the encoding specificity principle, that is the associations you form at the time of learning, will be the most effective retrieval cues, reminders that prompt your memory later. Some examples of encoding are mnemonic devices. These are any memory aids based on encoding items in a specific way. An example that has helped me personally to encode important information I need for my anatomy and physiology class is a mnemonic device we have developed to remember the cranial nerves of the body. This device allows me to remember not only the names of the nerves, but the order from anterior to posterior as well. It is OOO to touch and feel very soft velvet ah. This stands for olfactory cranial nerve 1, optive cranial nerve 2, oculomotor cranial nerve 3, trochlear cranial nerve 4, trigeminal cranial nerve 5, abducens cranial nerve 6, facial cranial nerve 7, vestibulocochlear cranial nerve 8, glossopharyngeal cranial nerve 9, vagus cranial nerve 10, spinal accessory cranial nerve 11, and hypoglossal cranial nerve 12. The second stage of memory is storage. Storage refers to maintaining information over time. Short-term memory is temporary storage of recent events, while long-term memory is a relatively permanent store. And consolidation is converting a short-term memory into a long-term memory. Storage or ways to enhance consolidation are to take some caffeine shortly after learning something or to go to sleep or rest quietly shortly after learning something. Retrieval is the ability to access and recall information when you need it. Depth of processing principle, how easily you retrieve a memory, depends on the number of types of associations you form at the time of learning the information. Retrieval cues, things or associations that you prompt to help your memory later. Retrieval examples. Imagine a patient being discharged from the hospital whose treatment involved taking various pills at various times, changing their dressings, and doing exercises. If the doctor gives these instructions in order which they must be carried out throughout the day, i.e. in sequence of time, this will help the patient remember them. In conclusion, memory affects society because without memory we wouldn't be able to interact with other people, culture and traditions would be non-existent and impossible, and society wouldn't be able to progress technology or improve in any way, so memory is essential to human existence. An example of a naturalistic study is that there are two groups of people, A and B. They're both expected to learn the capitals of each state in the United States. The control group A will receive no help and will just be told to learn the material how they please. The control variable group B will be told but told the same thing but the, be given numerous advantages such as retrieval cues and mnemonic devices. How well each group learned or retained the information after a certain amount of time then will be tested and compared.